Good afternoon and welcome to our series of webinars focused on bringing you information about COVID-19 related topics. The information in these weekly webinars is geared toward long-term care and skilled nursing facilities, but we encourage everyone who is interested to attend. My name is Kathy Caudill. I'm a communications specialist with Quality Insights. Today, we are joined by a special guest from Real-Time Medical Systems here to talk about software solutions to improve resident outcomes and quality of care in nursing homes. Everyone will be on mute, but we will be having a Q&A at the end of this webinar. So if you have any questions or comments, please send them to us using either the chat or the Q&A tool, which you can find in your Zoom menu. We invite you to join us every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for more webinars in this series. Next week, we will be, excuse me, next week, we will be talking about successful strategies to improve staff influenza vaccination rates. And I'd also like to invite everyone to the Quality Insights Nursing Home Team's uh, virtual event two weeks from now. Our team leader, Penny Imes, and our quality improvement specialists will be there to talk about our QIN QIO's new healthcare initiatives for nursing homes in Pennsylvania and West Virginia. And that event is Tuesday, September 20th at 1 p.m. If you would like to join, I will drop the link in the chat shortly where you can register. And with all that said, I would like to now introduce our guest today, Chris Jerez Johnson. Chris is a clinical specialist with Real-Time Medical Systems. She began her career as a physician assistant, rounding with a geriatrician in nursing facilities nearly 40 years ago. She went on to become a nursing home administrator and has helped long-term care medical practices and skilled facilities for many years. Chris is a native of Pottsville, Pennsylvania, the home of Yingling Beer, and she now resides in sunny Southwest Florida. So welcome, Chris, and thank you for joining us today. We have your presentation up here on the screen, and if you're ready, you can take it away. I will, and thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure uh, to be working through real time uh, with Quality Insights. and. Um, uh, I wanted to start by saying that real time, very simply, is an app that sits on top of a nursing facility's electronic health record and all day long, every day, pulls information from that record onto dashboards and reports that are held on a HIPAA secure portal. Uh, real time is out there for about five plus years now. We're in over 1,300 nursing facilities in the United States. Um, we are uh, HIPAA compliant and high trust certified. And uh, we help facilities improve clinical outcomes. And um, I wanna show you some things today on the demo site on our portal that will show you how we help you accomplish that because uh, we know that by being able to show you changes early on, you have a chance of reducing morbidity and return to hospital. Our, our tools, uh, as I mentioned, are all held on the cloud. And so you can access your facility data from anywhere in the world at any time of day and pretty much on any device. It requires no data entry. So all you do is to continue to do what you have always done in entering information into your electronic medical record. Um, it really helps you focus on the right patients at the right time. We look for hundreds of keywords in narrative notes and in point of care type of documentation. This is not an MDS scrubber. I know a lot of times when people hear about software that works with electronic health records that they think, oh, it's an MDS scrubber. And no, that's not what we are. We are a tool that helps you to intervene in real time in a live, in a live manner. So um, a very different way of looking at things. Uh, we know these days that nobody has extra time. I'll say, because I've been at this, as you heard already, for uh, 40 years, uh, no one ever had time in post-acute and long-term care, but we all know that you all who are still there on the front lines every day really have no time. And so it's always been our goal to have the technology really help people save time. 
Um, and if you're the nursing director or a nurse executive in, or manager in the building or the infection preventionist or MDS coordinator, these tools can be extraordinarily time saving. I'll, I'll do my best to illustrate that to you today. A lot of our success comes from an embedded algorithm that puts your current population of residents into one of three categories every single day. They're either at high risk of return to hospital, at low risk, or they're falling somewhere in between. Our algorithm looks at four things. We look at the types and number of alerts that are coming out to nursing in the most recent three days. We calculate in how recently that admission came from the hospital with new admissions being riskier than people that have been there for a few weeks. We look at your, what I call frequent flyers, people that are going out to the ER or getting readmitted to the hospital, and we add some risk if they have that profile. And then last but certainly not least, we look at all of their current active comorbid conditions or their diagnoses. And certain diagnoses carry more points than others. Like if someone had heart failure or pneumonia or COVID or sepsis, they get more points than someone who has arthritis. So CARD, the CARD readmission risk score, I'm going to show you this on our portal in just a few minutes, but it is a key to focusing on the right residents at the right time. We also have what I often say are second to none tools, reports, and a very deep dashboard for antibiotic stewardship and infection prevention and control. And because in just a few minutes in this overview with you, I want to show you what that looks like live on our portal. I won't go into details here, but we track emerging infections current infections and immunizations. And I'll show you how we do that and how we present that. Uh, our tools are, are available to see on well, pretty much every device. And as far as alerts go, we have many clinical people who choose to receive their alerts on their smartphones. And we work both with Apple and Android. And if you are the type of person who said, I don't want to have to look at a tablet or a laptop or a desktop, just pop it to my phone, we have an app for that. So um, I did want to make sure I mentioned that today. All of our tools help in three big ways. I've already described real time as a virtual quality improvement nurse, you know, in that EMR all day long, every day populating reports and dashboards. And the things that get done help the facility from a compliance point of view. It helps the facility clinically, especially related to morbidity and return to hospital. And, and again, last but certainly not least, we have a couple of tools that really help facilities financially to get paid correctly under PDPM. And as time permits today, I'll show you that too. So we're not, in, we're not an EMR, we're not an EHR, we work with them. We're not a scrubber, we're looking at your data live, not after and trying to scrub an MDS after the fact. We're looking at your current population of people all day long, every day. And we are, um, as I mentioned, HIPAA compliant and high trust certified. So we have all of those things. My colleague, Kathy Derleth and I both on the line today to be able to share more with you about um, our product. I want to switch next to um, the demo site on our portal. So let me come over to our dashboard and here I am. Uh, notice up here demo.realtimemed.com. Okay, so I'm on our portal and uh, we have a number of dashboards. Uh, we have a dashboard to help you get paid correctly under PDPM not only to be able to fill out your initial MDSs as completely as possible, but also once that MDS is submitted to alert you every single day if there are changes in condition which make you eligible for interim payment. We have uh, dashboards at a resident level where um, at the top of this page, there's a drop down box where you can pick any resident in the facility. Very, very easy to select anyone. And it refreshes that dashboard for that resident. 
We show you many different things, um, including their current vital signs, but not just their current vital signs. If you click on it, you're going to see a trend of the last week. So you're always able to see things and put things into context. On the resident dashboard, we keep track of all of their current active diagnoses, medications, and other orders. Are any alerts coming out about them on the 24-hour report? If you're linked to your lab, we can link to that and show you lab results. We can show you live out of the chart potential quality measure issues, and we can trend their score of risk of return to hospital. We have for everything what we call an enterprise level. So if your organization is part of a larger organization, we have a view for regional and corporate people where you can see all of the buildings on one platform. And we can even lay buildings side by side for the opportunity to compare and contrast um, what's going on in those buildings. At a facility level, I had mentioned in the PowerPoint slides that from a QA point of view, uh, we had a tool called our card readmission risk algorithm. And we all day long, every day, show you which of your residents are at highest risk of going back to the hospital. So now you can focus on those people first, every shift, every day. And, and with a simple click, you can see who they are. You can see what we found about them, how they scored 10 points or more gives them a red dot. They're at high risk of going back. And we show you all of the details. You know, what did we find? Well, we found a pretty new admission, somebody that just came in three days ago that has some pretty significant diagnoses. She came for a hip fracture. She's got COPD and diabetes and oh, she had COVID. And since she got here three days ago, she's not eating, she's not drinking, she's not moving her bowels. Of course, she's going to crash and go back to the hospital. Of course, we better really figure out together what can we do to try to prevent this. If we don't do anything, she will wind up there. We also have this ability to share with you um, some things to talk about at your meetings. Um, these are some of the top interventions that come from a couple of national uh, sources for the types of things that should be underway when someone is experiencing these problems. And so we have this opportunity with working with Quality Insights to look at these things, maybe tweak them a little bit more for your organization, you know, with your uh, with your teams. Oops, sorry, I clicked myself right out of my, <laughs> uh, trying to get rid of that pop-up for us. There we go. Um, we have the ability to edit these. So if your organization has things they'd like to see here um, and the QIO does, we can all, always edit this. We also can read narrative progress notes electronically. We've created a list of um, hundreds of words and short phrases. And we scan narrative notes, not just nursing notes, but dietary, social service, therapy. And we summarize the last three days of notes here, sentence or two before and after we have found certain words. And so in a few minutes, you can scan through some summary information on your highest risk people and uh, be able to, again, focus on those right people at the right time and potentially intervene. This dashboard that I'm on now, um, the um, uh, PROACT dashboard, um, has that card readmission risk algorithm down here. That's what I just showed you. But I want to point out that I'm only showing you kind of at the high level some of the power of uh, interventional uh, analytics, looking at your current people all day long, every day. Um, we also can trend month over month over the last year, look at your returns to hospital, help you be able to dive in and make better controls. Certainly we know infection and especially COVID-19 has captured all of our attention these days. And we um, are able to do a number of things to help the infection preventionist. It's a huge time saver where we look at different data points like antibiotic starts and days of therapy for your antibiotic stewardship program, 
instead of needing to go chart by chart to create a spreadsheet, you can easily come here and the spreadsheet is auto populated and updated for you um, um, all day long, every day. And so it's just a simple matter of downloading it. If you are tasked with needing to map and locate infections, we do it automatically. Here's all the different types of infections. You can click on any type and map it by unit in the building. And down below would be all of the details about that. So some very robust tools for infection control. We look at antibiotic orders by class of drugs. We discern between community acquired infections that came in or developed in the first 24 hour, 48 hours and healthcare acquired infections, which develop after 48 hours. And then a personal favorite of mine down here, we look at all of your nurse practitioners and PAs and physicians that are prescribing, and you can very easily for whatever period of time you wanna look at, um, be able to grab a spreadsheet and look at their profile. We also have um, on our clinical dashboard, uh, something I mentioned, and that is the real time live out of your chart quality measures. We are always looking at the last two weeks, ending at midnight last night, and we're showing you those residents who, if you had to do an MDS today, if survey walked in today, these are the issues that are brewing in their live documentation in the past two weeks. We make it very easy to simply click on these and uh, be able to bring up um, a list of who are those residents and exactly which quality measure issues are brewing so that you can focus your QAPI efforts most effectively in a very resident specific way. When I worked in buildings years ago, we looked at uh, CASPER reports, and I know a lot of buildings still do, and, and a lot of organizations, but it, it was always, as it is today, coming from old MDS data, many times on residents that aren't even in the building anymore. This is live out of your chart quality measures. In fact, real time went so far as to create a version, you know, a live version of the CASPER report. We call it the QM summary report. And we have your short stay residents here and your long stay down here. And every single day you can see, well, who's in my numerator? Who's in my denominator? What's my live average in the past two weeks? And how does that compare with what I last submitted to CMS and what my state and national average are? And not just how many people are in my numerator, but exactly who are those residents? So again, from a workflow point of view, this quick and easy ability to see your EHR data um, in, in a manner that enables you to um, intervene you know, quickly and effectively. Again, we have many reports. I'm in the reports folder here. And uh, because today is an overview and we invite you um, to, if you'd like to see this in more detail, we're happy to do that. So you'll be invited. We have a number of reports on things that are exactly the things that you need and want to see regarding um, regulatory compliance and uh, trying to reduce um, uh, return to hospital and staying ahead of potential adverse drug reactions and many, many more things. Um, I'll finish with, uh, we've got a couple of reports on immunizations, uh, keeping track these days of all of the different immunizations and dates and times, we've just automated that so that um, it is refreshed you know, each day and kept, uh, kept current. Uh, even the ability for infection control to just download their log, instead of having to create a log, you know, here is a log updated every single day that just needs to be downloaded. You can, you know, grab the information and go and go focus on the kinds of things that you really need to focus on. So by way of introduction, that's a, a quick intro to real time, a brief overview. At this point, I'm going to turn it over uh, to uh, Debbie, I think, uh, going forward. And uh, it was nice to be able to be here today. Thank you, Quality Insights. And um, I'll stay on a few more minutes, of course, if there's any questions. Debbie? Kathy?
Yeah, I was going to say real quick, if anyone has any questions, now would be a good time to drop them into the Q&A or the chat. And while we're waiting, Deborah is going to talk real quick about next steps. And Deborah is a quality improvement specialist here at Quality Insights, and she's been working in collaboration with Real Time. So thank you, Chris, um, for giving that high level overview of real time. I, I've said to a couple people that I've talked to, I wish I, I wish I knew about real time when I was in the facilities because it just has so much um, information and, and valuable um, tools that I think the facilities could use really at a quick a quick um, a glance and, and dive deeper and be able to do that drill down into why are your residents flagging in your quality measures. Um, so many of us also struggled with um, knowing when to do an IPA, you know, that's all right there helps helps to do that as well. But I really think that the infection control modules that they have and the reports that they have really um, dive into that antibiotic stewardship, dive into that um, prescriber information, the, the reports that are there for your line listing for your infections, um, they just really look spectacular. So we have partnered with Real Time because we feel that this is um, a wonderful system to, to utilize and to help with your quality measures, as well as the initiatives that we're working on with CMS um, and the facilities to improve the care that we that you provide to your residents. So if you're interested, I think Kathy has a poll. The next step would be to just let us know if you would like me to reach out to you, talk more about how the partnership will work. And then from there, um, I will connect you with Chris or Kathy and we will do some more um, overview and demonstrations that really will dive deeper into what real time can offer. And then um, if it's something you're interested in, then we will explain again how the partnership will really work and um, the benefits that it, that it will have for your facility. In doing that, there because this is a partnership, there's a limited amount of spaces available. So if it's something that you feel you are truly interested in, the sooner that you can let us know that, um, the better, so that we can reserve your spot for that. And um, from there, you know, we will we'll talk again high level on it um, on our September 20th call with the nursing home relaunch. And anytime that, that you're interested, you can feel free to reach out to me and um, we'll get you started. We look forward to the partnership with Real Time and um, the benefits that we think it will have for your facilities. All right, so I have that poll up. Um, you will only be contacted if you answer yes, and you will be contacted at the email address that you registered for this webinar with um, by Deb. And let's see, I've got a few answers. I'll probably end it here in another minute. In the meantime, again, if you have any questions for Chris, uh, please go ahead and drop those in for us. And I don't I have not received any so far. Oh, where'd my poll go? Also, I should say we're not sharing these poll results with the team here uh, with the with the webinar live chat. This is just for those who answer just for those who answer yes, we'll be contacted after the webinar by Deb. Okay, so I think, okay, we still have a couple coming in, so I'll leave that another moment. And so uh, certainly if you have any questions about real time, you know, you have two of their experts here, we can certainly answer some of those questions while um, those of you that are still deciding on answering the poll. And I'd like to say, I also put in the chat, I put my emails, my email and Deb's email in case uh, you wanna just reach out afterwards yourself or um, if for some reason the poll doesn't work for you. I had a problem with someone's poll a couple of weeks ago where it wasn't coming up for me. Who can say Zoom works in mysterious ways? Um, let's see. All right. So I'll leave that up another minute if it's all right. We don't have any questions, so I'll go ahead and uh, read um, the closing that I had here. And then if anything last minute comes in, we can circle back to it. I'd again like to remind everyone that next week we will be discussing successful strategies to improve staff influenza vaccination rates. 
That webinar will be Wednesday at 2. We also host office hours live chats every Tuesday at 8 a.m. and every Thursday at 2 p.m. The office hours are kind of like a message board, but they are live and you can drop in a, and ask a question. And one of our quality improvement specialists will be there to answer your questions. And let's see, we actually got a question real quick here. Does real time integrate directly with PCC? Yeah, um, we work with um, about 12 or 13 EMRs right now and PCC is the biggest one. So most of our hundreds of our current customers are on PCC. Um, our integration with them is very straightforward. You know, we basically simply sit on top of PCC and pull data all day long, every day, mostly, you know, through their replicated database, the data relay. So yes, it's our, uh, it, it, we, of our 1300 facilities, more than half of them are on PCC. We're very familiar with it. Okay, that's great. And we'll give people another minute to answer, to ask any more questions. And to finish um, talking about those live chats and those webinars I was mentioning, we put the links to all of those in a newsletter that we send out every Friday called the Last Minute Lowdown. I believe most people here are already receiving that newsletter. We send it out every Friday afternoon. If you're not getting that newsletter or if you don't think you're on, a li on the list, you can email me and I can check and help you get on that list. My email is ccaudill at qualityinsights.org and my email is in the chat for anyone who needs it. And if you need to contact me for anything else and any other issues. And I think that you guys wanna go ahead and wrap it up and call it for the day. Okay, well, I'll hit end on this poll. Let's see. All right. And that's it. So I guess we can go ahead and wrap up. I would like to thank Chris. Thank you for joining us today and for giving us that great presentation. Deb, thanks for setting this up. And I would like to thank everyone else for, who came and joined us today. Hope everybody has a great day. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. So long. Bye.